Hey guys, how are you? Everybody knows that Russian winters are cold, but there's one exception, and it's in the south of Russia, it's the city of Sochi. And I just got back from Sochi, so we're gonna talk about the city. Winters here are mild or even warm, there's hardly any snow along the coast, and the temperatures rarely drop below 5 Celsius. Alright, but why is Sochi so popular in the winter? Well, reason number one, of course, is the mountain. About a 40 minute drive from Sochi, you'll find Krasnaya Poliana, which in Old Russian means beautiful valley. There are three world-class ski resorts, Rosa Hutter, Gazprom and Krasnaya Poliana. Just so you don't get confused, this whole mountain area is referred to as Krasnaya Poliana. Now there's also a ski resort with the same name and a small town with the same name. Very confusing, I know. Rosa Hutter is the largest ski resort here. The total length of the ski slopes is 102 kilometers and its highest point is called Rosa Peak at 2320 meters above sea level. The other two resorts have a total length of ski slopes of 30 kilometers each. So all together you have 160 kilometers of ski slopes. That can keep you busy for several days. There are many hotels at different elevation levels. So if you want your vacation to be peaceful and quiet and you love privacy, you can stay up in the mountains right next to the ski lifts. Of course accommodation like that gets more expensive. Besides skiing and snowboarding, you get fantastic views of the mountains. So let's enjoy the ride and see what it's like skiing here. Что готовы показать то самый быстрый быстрый лыжник на Красной Поляне? Поехали! I think I liked Rosa Hooter the most, but it all depends on your skills and your preferences. They say Gazprom has more blue slopes for beginners and Krasna Poliana has more off-the-track options. Let's see what it's like skiing and snowboarding off the track because this is what Grisha and Vika were doing. And me, I'm so not ready for that at this point. This is the highest point of Krasna Poliana Ski Resort and it's called the Black Pyramid. It sits at an altitude of 2,375 meters. I would say it looks pretty intimidating in a cloudy weather like this. At every resort you'll find something else like cross-country skiing trails, snowmobiles and even open-air swimming pools. The skiing season starts in December and lasts till the end of March, but the best time to come, especially for those who like free riding, is in February and early March. By the way, you don't have to bring all your skiing equipment with you because you can rent it here. That's what I did. If you're just a beginner, make sure you get an instructor to teach you the basics. At each ski resort you'll find green slopes for beginners, blue ones for those with some experience like me, then red ones for experienced skiers and snowboarders, and black ones for pros. Oh, that guy fell, okay. Yeah, look, look. It's amazing. It's a... Uh... Uh, Are you saying two? somebody did this? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. somebody is very insane. Oh my god. <laughs> Sochi is an expensive resort for the average Russian. How much is a weekly vacation here? Well, Grisha and Vika's seven day vacation costs them $1,300. But they brought their own equipment so they didn't have to rent. And they rented a car just for one day. I spent about the same amount but I was staying in Adler by the sea and I was renting my skiing equipment and I was also renting a car and I spent a ton of money on parking because parking in Sochi and especially in the mountains is outrageous every time you want to park a car expect to pay at least three dollars and if you leave your car for more than four hours it's going to be ten bucks I call it a daytime robbery a major part of all my expenses in Sochi is the parking every day I would spend 700 to like over a thousand rubles just for the parking how much are the hotels? Hotel rooms in Sochi at this time can go from $30 a night in Adler to $300 a night at a place like Marriott in the mountains. Prices in the restaurants can be pretty high as well. A nice lunch for two can cost around $40. And how about a chiborek and tea that I bought for 650 rubles, which is about $10. 
Now that's about three times more expensive than I would pay in Yekaterinburg, and I was flabbergasted when they told me the price. Some hotels have huge heated outdoor swimming pools, like this one, which belongs to Zemtuzhina Hotel. And Zemtuzhina means a gem. And what's interesting is that they're actually pumping seawater into the swimming pool, so you're swimming in the seawater. That's cool. But what's even cooler is going to a similar swimming pool in the snowy mountains. The views are unforgettable. We went to an outdoor pool at Grand Hotel Poliana, located in Gazprom Ski Resort. The entry price was $16 per person, pricey of course, but the views make it all worth it. <laughs> In Sochi, gambling is allowed. And some people come here just for that, no matter what part of the year. Because in Russia we only have four gambling zones throughout the country, some people come to Sochi just for the sake of gambling. They don't care about the sea, they don't care about the, the mountain slopes, so they, they just come here to gamble. Isn't that amazing, right? So people get extra cash, that's wonderful. Ski passes for a day range from $30 to $50. Transportation is really hard to figure out because it's confusing. Unfortunately, there are no buses that are constantly circulating between the resorts. And if you're staying in Adler, you can get to Krasna and Poliana by car, taxi, buses or by train. And like I said, it takes about 40 minutes to get from Adler to the ski resorts, but the road is really enjoyable. You get great views, you're driving between the mountains, and the road is in perfect condition. No wonder, because it's one of the most expensive roads in the world. So where is the best place to stay? I would say Esther Sadok and Rosa Hooter are your best options. They're located right at the ski resorts. Vika and Grisha were renting an apartment right in the center of Esther Sadok for $80 per day. And it's considered a super deal because they booked it several months ahead of time. Otherwise, it would have been twice as expensive. Let's take a look at their apartment. Wow. You guys live right in the center of Esther Sadok, right? Let me show you Vika's apartment. Well, it's pretty spacious. But let's start with the with the bedroom. So here we have wonderful bedroom, all bright with a with a painting. It's important. Now here we have a combined living room with, with the kitchen. Also pretty spacious. Oh, there's Vika. Vika, would you like to show us uh, your balcony? Yes. Okay. You get an incredible view. We are right in the center of Esther Sadok, right? That's the name of the place. So, lots of restaurants. Uh, Pilmiana. If you love Russian Pilmeni, that's the place to go. See how crowded it is. So many people. Everybody's tired of skiing and they're hungry. В общем, это Эста Садок. Мы до этого жили в поселке Красная Поляна. Так. Вот. И это очень вводит в заблуждение, когда приезжаешь первый раз, ты приезжаешь на курорт Красной Поляны и думаешь, что нужно жить в Красной Поляне. Но это абсолютно не так. Неудобно жить в Красной Поляне и кататься где-то здесь. Uh -huh. Когда ты живешь в Эста Садок, все очень близко. У тебя подъемник в 100 метрах, до другой горки тебе ехать одну автобусную остановку. Uh -huh. Здесь все в кафешках, можно увидеть это красиво, много людей, всякие движухи. Вот. Здесь прям чувствуется настоящая такая атмосфера горнолыжного курорта. Вот сейчас, кстати, будет ярмарка, можно пройти, посмотреть. Прикольно. Горячий глинтвейн, алкогольный пес, семь видов, друзья. Спасибо, спасибо. Merry go round. Grisha just told me that this place is really, has got really good pancakes. If you guys are hungry for some Russian pancakes, that's the place to go. This is the famous church Hella. Those are nuts covered in condensed uh, juice. People normally come to Sochi in the winter for 7 to 10 days. So what's there to do in Sochi once you get tired of skiing? Just so you get the idea, Sochi is a very long city. You have central Sochi and you have Adler. It's the newer part. They're not exactly close. It takes about 40 minutes by car to get from one part to another. And we're going 
If you're staying in Adler, you can visit the Olympic Park that was built specially for the Winter Olympics. In the evening, they have Singing Fountain show. It's nice, but if you've been to Macau, Dubai, or Las Vegas, you probably won't be impressed. There's also a motor track, Sochi Circuit, where you can test your driving skills or watch some racing competitions. You can visit Sochi Park. It's an amusement park with roller coasters and different rides Sochi that was park. opened in 2014. But my personal favorite is just to walk along the Emeritinska waterfront promenade. It's modern and it has a nice wide beach with no wave breakers and it's 7 kilometers long. You can rent bicycles, scooters and all kinds of other equipment and travel along the promenade all the way to the border with Abkhazia. It's a pebble skyscraper. 70 stories high. Is it possible to go swimming in Sochi in the winter? No, really, but I did it anyway. Let's watch. All right, we're gonna test the Black Sea. Today's the March already, but it's still kind of winter, right? So let's see how the water, how the water feels. Oh, feels like summertime. Ah. Richard, would you like to do it? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, that's good. So I think the mission is accomplished. I've been to the mountains and I've swam, swam in the sea. That's it. Now, if you happen to go to central Sochi, you can visit Sochi Marine Terminal. Watch different yachts, go for a boat ride, enjoy the sunset, and the food options are great. You can walk along the Sochi promenade, and during the summer, this area is super crowded. See, even during the winter, right now, it's, this place is pretty crowded because it's the warmest part of Russia. And many Russians just don't have an option to go anywhere else. You know, like some people working for the government are restricted from leaving Russia, so Sochi would be the only option. That's why the beaches stay crowded, even though it's kind of chilly, honestly. You know, it's not a wide beach. There's not too many things to do. It's also pebbles. It's not very clean. You know, it's not your favorite location to, to go swimming, but it's a good place to go strolling, take a walk, you know, all that. But I find these wave breakers so ugly. I'm sure there's a better solution to break the waves, but these old concrete blocks look just so terrible, you know. I always hated them. <laughs> I got inside to get some vitamin C, and I bought some orange juice, and my mom decided to get some pomegranate juice. Your drink. Your drink, my friend. Thanks so much. All right. Good. You can visit the local food market and buy some local desserts and snacks like church hella, local goat cheese, dried persimmon, and others. Это фундук, это грецкие орехи, орехи у меня и не кубанские, из Абхазии сама оттуда чуть-чуть, тоже мы сами делаем из грецкого ореха с фундука с миндалем, грецкие орехи с фруктами, чурчхелы натуральные, есть грузинские чурчхелы тоже, вот эти грузинские чурчхелы, которые делаются на вине. Make sure you visit one of the abandoned Soviet-style resorts like this one, Orjani Kids a Health Resort, to get a glimpse of what it was like during the Soviet times. This resort is enormous. And apparently the current owner doesn't have enough money to restore it back to its original form and to make it profitable. Well, we are at the famous Soviet health resort, uh, named after Sergio Arginikidze. The, the construction started in 1934 and it was finished in 1937. And first it operated as a health resort sanatorium for minors. And during the Second World War, it was a hospital. And then after 1964, it was a sanatorium, a health resort for everybody. Now, in 2010, in modern time, it went bankrupt. And now it's uh, kind of abandoned. There are some owners that apparently don't have enough funding to keep it running again. And so maybe it will be running sometime in the future. But for now, it's just like a museum of the Soviet past. And it's, you know, it's pretty massive. It's pretty massive, you know, the, the area. You know, land in Sochi costs a lot of money, and this place occupies a lot of land, so obviously it, it's, a, it's pretty pricey. If you're an Orthodox Christian, you can visit Cathedral of Michael the Archangel. 
It's pretty unusual seeing a Russian Orthodox church among palm trees, isn't it? Now, I mentioned that I rented a car, right? So let's explore some places outside of Sochi. I visited one of the local farms called Exarcho. They have goats, chickens, and bulls and cows. Привет. And you can feed the goats if you want to. It was a lot of fun. Так, тебе. И тебе. И тебе. И тебе. Тебе. Король коз, видишь, когда раздаются его. Тебе большую, да. They also have a stable, and the cost of boarding a horse is 35,000 per month, that's about $400 per month, and they said a nice horse to buy would be about $12,000. They also have a riding arena where they train horses in the winter, and in the summertime they said it's much more impressive. They have a hot air balloon to fly in the mountains, and they also take their horses out to ride in the mountains. There is also a restaurant with great views where you can enjoy some organic fresh products like goat cheese, milk and some local wines. I just got my beef cheeks. This is very tender meat. Now both these guys want to be my friends now. Okay, now you want to be my friend, right? And that dog too. You want to be my friend too now, right? Okay, I see. But, sorry, I'm hungry too. Next, I visited local tea plantations called Matsesta. In fact, it's the northernmost grown tea in the world. They have both green tea and black tea, and they offer a nice tour with tea tasting. If you love tea, that's the place to go. You're gonna learn all about tea production. And everybody knows that Russians are a tea drinking nation. Tea was introduced in Russia in the mid 1600s as a gift from Mongolia to Tsar Michael I and it was used by the noble people for medical purposes at first. By the late 1700s tea was gaining acceptance in Russian society which brought the prices down. And the first tea plantation around Sochi was started in 1901 and today there are five tea companies and this particular one uses modern Japanese equipment and has already won several international awards. Дорогие друзья, мы вас приветствуем на плантациях Мацистинского предприятия. Наших плантаций много. Мы хотим, чтобы и вы тоже вместе с нами сюда приехали, полюбовались нашими чаями и попробовали в обязательном порядке наш чай. Мы вас обязательно угостим. Приглашаем вас. Приезжайте, пожалуйста. Спасибо. A lot of people were asking me about lockdowns. There's really not too many restrictions when it comes to COVID in Sochi. Masks are only required when you enter a building like a gas station or a store. Even inside the hotel you don't have to wear them. Sochi has always been a popular city in Russia, and people have been moving to Sochi from colder parts of Russia recently. But good paying jobs here are hard to find, and local jobs don't really pay much. Average salary is just like around the country, around $500. And unless you can manage to make money online, it's tough to support yourself. Do I have any complaints? Yes. Customer service in most places lives much to be desired. It hasn't really changed much since the Soviet times. People are reserved and smiles are hard to come by, and you can feel a little bit of indifference. Hardly anybody will say to you, have a good day, sir. The attitude is that tourists are still going to be coming here, so why bother smiling? Sellers are not always honest. If you're buying pomegranate juice, make sure they make it in front of you. Otherwise, they can mix it with some sugar water. Don't be naive and stand your ground because people will take advantage of you. A complaint about the ski resorts is that there's no affordable universal ski pass for all the three resorts. Each one of them will offer you a super deal for like five or seven days, but you will be restricted to only that specific ski resort. But you don't want to be going to the same resort every day. You want to try them all, and there's no such option. There are not enough ski lifts at the lower level, so you end up staying in long lines like this. A line like this can take up to 30 minutes. When it comes to driving around Sochi, traffic is bad. To get from central Sochi to Adler takes about 40 to 50 minutes depending on the time of the day. Even though the roads are in perfect condition, traffic still gets congested. 
Also bear in mind that in the winter and springtime Sochi can be pretty rainy and the weather is unpredictable. Did we enjoy our vacation? Absolutely. Sochi is a unique place for Russia. It stays busy all year round. It gets skiing enthusiasts in the winter, beach lovers in the summer and gamblers all year round. As we were living the weather was really looking up. Warm, sunny and no clouds in the sky. Which means I might be thinking about coming back some other time. Alright, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Alright guys, let's go for a ride, right? Сейчас мы спросим у Гриши, что он думает о трех подъемниках, о трех курортах, которые здесь находятся. Потому что Гриша был за границей в Европе, и ему, может, ему есть чем сравнить. Гриша, расскажи твое мнение. Ну, давай, на самом деле, самый первый момент, который прозвучал, это то, что здесь действительно три горнолыжных курорта. Хотя это одна зона. Вот, в Европе обычно ну, это является одним курортом. То есть у тебя есть единый скипас, ты покатался сегодня здесь, завтра там. По поводу самого катания. Мне лично понравилась больше всего Красная Поляна. Я потому что катаюсь в фрирайд. Самый, наверное, распиаренный это Роза Кутер. Нам там по изобу, хорошая погода, были классные виды. Но, на мой взгляд, он очень переоценен. И непонятно для какого уровня он катания. То есть для серьезного уровня катания там я бы не сказал, что есть какие-то интересные трассы. Хотя есть и черные, конечно, и красные, но тем не менее они не очень хорошо выстроены, на мой взгляд. И для новичков, я считаю, это очень опасный курорт, потому что многие зеленые трассы являются просто э, трассами, с которых опытные лыжники добираются до других трасс. То есть я, например, хочу покататься на красной, и я должен ехать по зеленой. Естественно, я буду ехать быстро, тем самым я создаю опасность для людей, которые там учатся и ездят медленно. А, мы жили по половину поездки в Красной Поляне поселок, и это было, на мой взгляд, очень удачным выбором, потому что там... Э, достаточно проблематично с автобусами, то есть в автобусах ездят местные жители, сноубордисты, лыжники, они все забиты, останавливаются на каждой остановке, заезжают везде и повсюду, и, в общем, ехать очень долго, хотя находится Красная Поляна ну, в 10 километрах отсюда, но ехать приходилось там больше 30 минут. Вот. При этом на машине, опять-таки, здесь тоже неудобно, потому что парковку сложно найти, все парковки либо платные очень дорогие, либо незаконные, в общем, на машине не вариант. На автобусе неудобно. В этом плане Эстес Садок, конечно же, удобнее, потому что мы живем в 100 метрах от подъемника, и нам даже автобус не нужен. Но, соответственно, и цены здесь сразу же взлетают до европейского уровня. Кришина, я уверен, что есть за что и похвалить данный курорт. А, Давай да. вспомним про плюсы. Чуть не забыли. На самом деле, самый большой плюс, я бы отметил, то, что это классные горы, сами по себе очень красивые и интересный рельеф. То есть для какого-то сложного катания, для фрирайда здесь есть классные участки. Можно где-то прыгнуть со скалы, где-то прокатиться по лесу хорошо, где-то просто по поляне. В общем, очень разнообразный рельеф, очень насыщенный. А, Из-за того, что мы находимся рядом с морем, здесь много осадков. Это и минус, и плюс. Минус, понятно, что теряется видимость, но зато на следующий день выпадает много снега. Вы катаетесь по полям, у вас снега больше, чем до колена. Это очень классно. Я бы сказал, что здесь можно построить прям хорошего уровня в конкуренции с Европой курорт, если развить инфраструктуру, расширить количество объектов, потому что сейчас есть очереди на подъемниках неприятные. Для этого нужно просто разрастаться в долине и объединять все это в некую такую единую, единый комплекс, чтобы человеку, который сюда приезжает, не приходилось задумываться, что здесь к чему, чтобы он mm -hmm. просто приехал. Заплатил деньги за скипас, за автобус, что угодно, за проживание и просто получал удовольствие от катания. Вот пока что этого не хватает. Но именно природные данные здесь есть. Вот, я считаю. Как... Планирую еще раз приехать? А, я думаю, да. То есть, на самом деле, мне, в принципе, понравилось. А, я бы см по смотрел бы именно конкретно под погоду, чтобы приехать после снегопада, потому что я люблю фрирайд. И я бы пошел бы на Красную Поляну. Отлично. Тогда увидимся еще раз. <laughs>